Hello everyone, and uh, what we're going to do today is looking at the workshop 1.1 for CFD ANSYS meshing basics. So uh, very similar if you've already done all the videos for ANSYS design modeler, we've now moved on to the ANSYS meshing. So workshop 1.1 looks at a T-junction. Um, again, what we're going to be doing is the objectives for this uh, one is to generate a mesh, create a name selection, we're also going to be looking at using the inflation function, look at the check mesh quality and saving the project, obviously, uh, if you watched the previous videos for this week, you know how to um, save your work files. So the first thing what we want to do is drag and drop from the component system uh, an individual mesh element. So drag and drop this into the green section here. And what we want to do is we want to import in a file. So uh, the right click on the geometry and import geometry and if we go to browse what you'll have to do is go to your work download folder and in your work files what you're looking for is the pipe tstp file so if we go down pipe tstp file press open and you'll see a green tick on there and then if you just double click on mesh the meshing will open now once ANSYS meshing is open, it will try and import the model in. Um, you can then go to your display, uh, depending on how you want to view your model. Um, you may want to have it transparent um, or as a wireframe, it's up to you. Uh, the one thing I want to do is make sure that our units um, are selected as meter, metric meter, um, for this workshop. And the first thing that we can see is we're going to set the default uh, to demonstrate the basic mesh can quickly be generated using the minimum input. So, and that's simply by right clicking generate mesh there, or you can press generate mesh up here. Now, once the mesh is generated, you can see very quickly um, what your mesh will look like. Um, and then we can look at the mesh panel down here to look at some of the quality and controls that we can have. So, one thing we can see is we've got the local and global meshing and that's something that we're going to be working on throughout these videos so if we open up the sizing um, and bring this up a little bit more here what we can do is we can have a look at see what everything is set up as at the moment the physical pro preference physical preference is mechanical we want to change this to cfd and the solver preference is going to be answers fluent we have everything else as linear default standard and the use adaptive sizing is no and because this is curved geometry what we want to do is we want to capture the curvature and we want to make sure that's yes once we've done that now what we can do is press generate mesh again and you'll see straight away that the mesh is a little bit more defined and appropriate for this uh, physical model so this is using the automatic method um, and the automatic method has used tetrahedrons um, for this uh, which is much quicker and much more faster what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, apply some boundary conditions so select the face tool select this face now you can either right click and create name selection but as you can see there's an n next to it so if you select this face and press N on the keyboard it will come up with the name selection dialog box and what we want to do here is because it's in the Z direction we want to put inlet minus Z and we do something very similar to the top part um, which is up here Why? Oh, sorry. Uh, this is the outlet, the top, and the bottom is. Oh. Minus Y. So now that we have the name selections, we can see here we have inlet Z, outlet and the inlet Y. So the name selection, uh, selections have been given. Anything else, any other surfaces that have not been provided a name in the name selection, once you export into Ansys Fluent will be by default um, a wall. So that's something that you need to uh, take into account when giving name selections. So 
this mesh here is very good for laminar flow, uh, but sometimes turbulent flow can be more dominant within the flow regime. So where inflation um, can actually encounter for any sort of boundary layer formation. So what we're going to do now is we're going to try and um, introduce um, an inflation layer. Um, and that way it will provide us uh, with a bit more guidance for any sort of boundary layer formation taking place. So again, if we click on the mesh um, and you go down, you will see an inflation tab down the bottom here. Um, you can close the sizing to make it um, a little bit more um, appropriate for your screen. And what we want to do here is we want to use program controlled um, in the uh, approach. And here we put smooth, leave that as 0.2, leave that as 5. And then if we just press generate mesh, what you'll see straight away is that you can see the uh, wall has an inflation of five layers um, and then coming out to a larger more size and this can be seen um, everywhere um, along the inlet and the outlets but at the same time also uh, this is done with internal so what we want to do is uh, make sure that we can physically see what's happening inside so if we just turn it around a little bit and click on plus Z zoom out and we're going to use the mid cut plane view so um, again every year ANSYS always changes uh, their GUI so you just have to get a little bit uh, used to finding everything so it's the selection plane that we want to use so select this cut through the middle turn it around and we can now physically see the actual inflation within our domain um, going around the corners so at the same time using this uh, plain view we can also um, using the selection plane tool here select this and we can also edit going through making sure that our inflation is correct and once we've done that you can also observe using this one where it gives you more of a 3D effect of what's actually happening with the mesh within your model and looking at the inflation as well. Now at the same time we can also look at the mesh quality um, and it's very important mesh qualities uh, depending on how accurate you want your results um, and how appropriate model is. So again if we go to the detail section here we will have quality tab and if you open up the quality tab and what we want to do is we can see that the smoothing is on medium we can change that to high um, and then obviously here the mesh matrix we change that to a orthogonal quality and it allows us to generate the mesh again so just click on that and you can see now it's, it's fixed what we need um, and it's provided us the orthogonal quality. So the orthogonal quality here um, it requires to be um, within a certain criteria so it should not fall below uh, 0 0.05 the minimum for this mesh is acceptable um, but however we can change uh, the mesh matrix uh, smoothing feature and this can also um, have uh, a major impact on the actual model itself. So that's just very simply some of the basic um, approach to the meshing using the standard method uh, for um, CFD. The next video is now is going to look at the basics for an FEA model.